yeah, just the lockdown stuff getting to the stage where it's, uh, uh, no, <laughs> it's good that we've got a guaranteed some, it, something to talk it about. Really. It was the first time I'd actually looked up lockdown stuff for like four weeks. Like I've just stayed away from it. Uh, well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the next episode of this podcast. What episode are we on now? <laughs> episode seven. Uh, seven. It's like Jeez. seven. Jesus Christ, yeah. we're doing this for nearly two months, Sean. We're getting old. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you are getting old listening to us talk about shite all day. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. But, uh, yeah, no, welcome back. It's a very going to be a very chilled, laid-back one today. Uh so yeah, it's gonna oh, be. Oh, t-shirt. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, no, it's Cornetto I'm trilogy. Sure, I've seen it before, but <laughs> yes, Cornetto trilogy. If you've ever, I actually wore this one when I came up. I think both times. <laughs> I, I love this top. Everywhere I go, this top comes with me. Yes, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, lots to talk about. Lots of stuff has happened. Um, so I guess we'll yeah. start with the most depressing shit, <laughs> which is the. Uh, the wonderful topic of lockdown. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I suppose our, our loose schedule is talking about lockdown first. Then it's like, it seems to be news, news, games, films, and TV. Yeah. Uh, games, films, and conspiracy. Yeah, and, then that kind of stuff. and then we just get into the conspiracy. It works. It works, man. Why change well, something if it works? <laughs> if it ain't broke, they'll fix it. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah, so. Lockdown. <clears throat> Would you like yeah. to start? Uh, uh, sure, absolutely. So the first thing I want to touch on today was the fact that we have actually, in the UK now, gone back into second place for the most deaths, sadly, uh, passing 40,000 deaths, um, which isn't surprising to me, which sounds a bit horrible. But another thing was uh, I was going to actually ask coming off of this, because uh, watching a lot of information in the last couple of days, as do you reckon the government are being fully truthful, possibly lying um, when they're telling us information and things like that, um, talking about how they're going, uh, how they could lock down again straight away without an issue if something was to happen. Uh, they're talking about this thing like uh, they're moving away from national lockdown into regional lockdowns. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or I, they never actually use that word though, and like, like other places are doing. It's like we'll just target specific places and yeah. like hospitals or something and just close it down. Mm. so i don't think they do have a plan i don't think they're actually planning to lock anything down again yeah no but obviously uh, on, on the note of the deaths and stuff um uh not i think in the last uh daily update which wasn't yesterday i think it was a day before when boris was doing it uh he mentioned how um or i think it was the health secretary or something that said um how the, this this could possibly be a second wave um unfortunately due to the fact that cases have gone up ever so slightly they reckon the r has increased again but uh back to like 0. 0.7 between 0. 0.7 and 1 um what's kind of your take on that do you think did you kind of see this coming do you think it is a second wave or do you think they're kind of just jumping the gun a bit because they're concerned about what could possibly happen i think they're just kind of covering all uh potential scenarios i suppose mm. um i know that the r in my region is definitely above one so we <laughs> yeah. some regions are like not even hit the peak of this virus yet which yeah. is quite concerned but um yeah they're just kind of covering the backs in case of another disaster yeah um but i, I, I don't know if there will be a second fake i've like i've heard some scientists talking about the the virus will die out on its own and stuff like that so. i don't know i think i think for me it's it's very much a Wait till winter. <laughs> watching, watching Boris in the house as well. Just the asshole will not answer anything. He just no. has these bullshit little fucking push away answers that just go, oh no, ignore the question. I, I'm the, I know what I'm doing. I'm prime minister. I mean, I'm, I'm just like Trump, but I'm, I'm the prime minister. I know <laughs> what I'm doing. And it's, yeah. I don't know. It's shocking to me that so many good questions were getting brought up to him, kind of. Uh, Especially with Keir Starmer, right? Keir Starmer, I'm, uh, by the way, just for clarification, I'm not a Labour or a Conservative. I don't know for either. But Keir Starmer brought up a very good point, um, is the fact that Johnson hasn't been replying to private conversations and stuff with different politicians. And it's just kind of, if he has been um, like replying, he's not been telling the same thing um, in the House. Yeah, inconsistent. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and what made it more drastic is that uh, Keir Starmer actually brought these into the House and said, yeah, they can go public. 
just to prove mm. uh, just, do you think that's kind of like a power move on Keir Starmer's part to try and maybe sway the public to vote Labour or do you think it's a genuine thing hi Peach uh, do you think it's a genuine thing of yeah, the, yeah. Well, these... these politicians they're all like trained to give you non-answers all the time uh, and I don't think you'd ever get a clear answer if you asked them you know is this <laughs> black or white that's a bad, bad <laughs> reference at the moment but, yeah, yeah um, absolutely but you'd uh, um, yeah, so I think he's definitely trying to get people on board with Labour. Um, I've I've always been a Labour supporter, but I'm not sure about Keir Starmer. I'm like, I wasn't sure about Jeremy Corbyn, but yeah. I'm not sure about him. I need to even to prove himself. Yet. Yeah, I th- I think to be honest, my my personal opinion is I like how Keir Starmer is treating Boris. Uh, the way he's yeah. putting so much pressure on him, he's asking the questions people want answers to, and Boris is just deflecting constantly. He's not giving them any information. I think that's where. Uh, Boris is just losing control, like massively. He is he's oh, digging yeah. himself a bigger hole. I don't kind of know what you're. How 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 is because this brings me on to my next point. It's the the huge drop in trust. In yeah. The like well, at oh, the beginning yeah. of this lockdown, they had a pretty much nearly a hundred percent. Well, I wouldn't say hundred yeah. percent. Around the seventy-five, kind of eighty-five percent mark of of people trusting them. Whereas now. We don't know, because they did do a thing recently. The government did do that thing again, where they were kind of like, well, how do you feel about your government? They haven't released the figures for this one. Mm, interesting. And But Keir Starmer did point something out in the House, which was that um, the, the approval rating is the lowest it's ever been now for this government. Uh, and yeah. when asked about that, Boris didn't even acknowledge it. He just glossed over it and said, well, I'm doing right by the government and the government believes in me. And you've just heard this mass of just, no. <laughs> really, <laughs> or that. Or that. <laughs> but no, it was it was just shocking. I don't know. how, how, how What's your kind of take on it? Knowing oh, that yeah. the prime minister is just so negligent and doesn't really give a shit how people perceive him anymore. You know. Well, I think, as you said at the start, there's, um, there's a, a whole range of support for him. Like People who didn't like him liked him then. They stood behind him or stood by him anyway. Mm. Um, but I think it's just after the whole uh, Cummings Gate, I think you call it, just a, <laughs> just kicked every normal person, everyone who supported him, everyone who didn't support him, in the teeth. Mm. And um, it's just made everyone lose a whole lot of respect and trust, to yeah. be quite honest. Absolutely. Hello. Um, so, yeah, so how can you uh, trust a government that doesn't, it doesn't see its own mistakes and doesn't apologise for them yet? Yeah, no. it's it's uh, definitely a, a thing of not not being surprised, uh, like at the fact that you know no one trusts the government anymore, and and that's the shameful thing about it is that in, especially in times like this where, you know, they're opening the country back up, they're allowing people to come over now and be quarantined for fourteen days and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a dangerous move, and the fact that there could be a risk of a second peak already starting to show itself. You know, are they really doing the right thing? You know, do they even know what they're doing? You know, it's just this typical like lateness of this, this government, the lazy approach it seems. Yeah, I mean, probably there's probably tons of people working day and night on this, but oh, it just yeah. seems like five steps behind every other country. Yeah, when it comes to this, like, why didn't we do the quarantine at the start? Why didn't they tell us to wear masks at the start? Yeah, why Absolutely. didn't we have all these things in place at the start? You know, yeah, it's kind of like at least in the first few weeks. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I think you know. um what was it? I, and and this is just to put out there as well. I'm not bashing anyone behind the scenes. I'm sure there are people who work in their ass off in the government to try and get answers to do things right. It's just unfortunate that Boris is kind of the front runner for it, and he doesn't really know what he's fucking doing anymore. You know? Yeah, it's like he was elected on his like ability to capture the room and make everyone oh, oh I say uh, everyone laugh. Yeah. Um, but now that he's faced with a serious issue. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. He comes across as a bit of a tit. Um, yeah, no, that's not what we need right now. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, by the way, the the just to point this out as well, if anyone is interested, I highly recommend going to watch it. It was the June 3rd talk in the house that they had. Uh, and with every question he got, this was another thing Boris did it again. You know, he was making out as if he was being attacked, um, you know, because he was getting so much crap and, and stuff like that. Um, do you feel like Boris is a coward? for making that kind of argument that he's being attacked, you know, um, or do you think that it's kind of a diversion thing, you know, or, uh, definitely a, defending, a diversion. Do you think he's defending himself or do you think he genuinely has taken the coward way out of just not answering questions and being like, you know, whatever. It shouldn't be a point of him being, uh, like attack, attacked or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, he is the face of the country at the moment. So it, it, 
as a person, he's completely separate from his position, yeah. Mm-hmm. So he shouldn't be attacked, or he, he shouldn't feel like he's being attacked because people are just pointing answers to yeah. questions that everyone's asking. Um, no, absolutely. So, but it's that kind of his kind of attitude of taking things personally, and like not answering mm-hmm. certain questions. It's just getting a bit uh, tedious now. Yeah, I, th- I think he definitely isn't taking criticism very well anymore. He's starting to just come across like a bit of a Trump. Um, yeah, sort of just all saying, you need to do is sit wrong, down, you know. sit down with those, like, admit the mistakes that they made. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just be honest. For, like, I, I'd have much more respect for them if they just turned and went, do you know what, we hold our hands up, we made a lot of silly decisions, a lot of moves we made, we have no idea what we're talking about, yeah. we, but can you blame us? We're trying to deal with something that's never been dealt with before. You know, yeah, and a lot of people would have sympathy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I think they're kind of past that point now where they would even be able to do that. I know, it's just like leaving things too late, it's like, it never helps. Um, it's like if you do one thing at, at the time, that's like the cut off point of yeah. you being like sympathized with. But you know, after that, it's just like, oh, you know, now you're doing it for PR and because people have told you to do it. Absolutely. Um, the last thing that I've got about talking about lockdown stuff and whatnot is the alert level being uh, contradicted by Boris himself. Uh, the rules he set up for the stages of between one and five, he was like, once we meet all five of these, we can move up a level, you know, that kind of, uh, oh, kind yeah. of thing. Um, he has now contradicted that because not all those levels are now being met. Like the R has started to rise again. Um, yeah. Obviously, as we've discussed, you know, infections are coming back up again. Deaths have started increasing again. Um, but yet he's still insistent that it is fine to keep opening up the the, the UK and continue to push this uh, rebirth of the economy, essentially, which, yes, we need. But I think what we need more importantly is not to have a second wave. Um, yeah. Do you think this kind of alert level was rushed and not properly thought about? Or do you kind of think that it's maybe just something he's not thinking about clearly right now because he's got so much shit to worry about? And kind uh, of it just feels like they made up that kind of the, the Nando's scale, as everyone calls it. Like, uh, like they just made that up on the fly and they haven't really referenced it since. Uh, like yeah. maybe once or twice. But um, I don't know. It just feels like it doesn't even. They've already set in. They've already decided when the economy is going to reopen. Basically, yeah. um, <clears throat> they're sticking to it. They'll make the numbers fit, <laughs> regardless. Somehow, yeah. It just seems like with all this like lack of trust, you just know that that's what's going on behind the scenes. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. So things are going to move forward regardless, because the you know, economy is the most important thing for politics. Mm. Um, it's not the focusing more on the politics and the science. So. Yeah, which is a shame. Yeah, I um, I wish we could. I wish we could just listen to the sites, but you know, we have to listen to the politics of it. You know? Yeah, which it, it, I I I sort of agree to it because um, the next thing I was going to come to was something that Boris was actually questioned about moving away from lockdown. You know, there's a lot of stress going on right now with that and stuff, but there's also obviously the riots and everything that have been going on too. Um. Now, I have my own personal feelings about the riots and stuff, which I'll get into in a bit. But Boris actually got asked if he would acknowledge in the House, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and the movement and everything that's important. And of course, Boris gave the sort of wish-washy answer of, yes, Black Lives Matter and yes, people should be allowed to protest and whatever. But something interesting that we didn't, I didn't actually, uh, wasn't aware of, I'm not sure if you are, but a lot of the riot gear that's made for the police in America actually gets distributed from us. We send a lot of that right gear over. Now, Boris was asked if he would look into how much we're sending over if he's so, as Boris has made a statement on, he doesn't agree with how the, their riots are being handled in America, the violence the police are bringing. Mm. Um, and uh, it was some Saki comment or something like, oh, will, will the prime minister talk to his best friend Trump and, uh, you know, sort something out about it? And Boris just completely ignored it. Yeah. Wouldn't even mention it. Now, I think he's already talked to Trump and I think he's already said, yeah, sure, we'll keep sending gear or whatever, whatever you need, you yeah. know, because they're best friends, let's face it. Um, and because we've left the EU, we kind of need a powerhouse like America to sort of help jumpstart our economy and everything yeah. once oh, yeah. know, we leave properly. I guess my, my question is kind of what's your view on that? Like how police are being treated in this country, especially as well with, with the riots and stuff. Um, but the idea that we are supplying the American police and stuff with the batons and the the, the riot gear they need, uh, I guess. Mm. Need I suppose uh, I would lean uh, 
uh, it's, you can't really uh, accuse our government of kind of promoting this kind of violence by sending the gear over. It's, it's up to them how they use it, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I'd say this is definitely more of a, a business decision to get the economy moving again. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, completely uh, <laughs> separate topic on the whole uh, Black Lives Matter, I suppose, uh, yeah, that whole movement. I think it kind of um, got shoehorned in there in the question, to be honest, because Boris yeah. never said Black Lives Matter. So they were just yeah. trying to get him to say it. Boris is a very, I think, he needs his advisor to tell him what to say. Yeah. And anything that comes up that is um, not been discussed previously, he will have to go back and, you know, ask his best pal. He's very, uh, very, very sketchy when he talks. He, he's very careful with his words now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, uh, in the beginning of this, he was very sort of, oh, I'll say whatever I want. You know, people love me because I compare Brexit to a cabbage. Um Whereas now he's so choosy with his words and he's so careful about his answers. Yeah. You can just tell he's gone from that, that per person that people loved because they felt they could relate. The personality, yeah. To just, nope, he's a politician. A shell. <laughs> yeah, no. A I shell of a man in the prime minister's body. Yeah, mad. Um, yeah. But yeah, I suppose if we're, we'll just finish up on lockdown with um, yeah, the making cool. masks compulsory mm -hmm. from the 14th of June, apparently. Yeah. Well, for, for like pub out in public anyway. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether they're making it law or it's just part of the guidance. But I think, why, why now, and why mm. do you think it's too late now, or do you think why make us wait till the fourteenth of June? Surely any advice given should be now. <laughs> I think it just comes back to uh, absolutely to, to kind of answer one of the points is that this should have been implemented sooner. Um, masks don't protect you from others; they protect others from you. So uh, essentially, if everyone wore a mask, everyone would be high, much more, you know, less risk. Yeah. Um, I think uh, it's definitely a good idea. Also, the mask thing is not like they don't expect people to wear surgical masks. It's yeah. wear something around your face, uh, around yeah. your nose and your mouth just to keep you safe, whether it's a bandana, whether it's a scarf, where it's a top, wh whatever you've got, you know, wear something when you go out so you're protecting others. I think it's mm -hmm. mandatory now to wear it on public transport. Um, yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think if people have, because let's face it, people that are squished on those tubes, uh, regardless, yeah. I don't think no matter what happened, that was going to happen. So wearing masks, I think, uh, or face coverings or whatever, absolutely essential. I think that on public transport, it should be law. Um, yeah. Well, where about, social, social distancing isn't possible, definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, yeah. Out and about, going for walks and stuff, I don't know. I think people are not going to listen to it so much because who wants to wear a restricting thing no. when they're trying to go for a nice relaxing walk or something. I think it just comes down to common sense. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, as Boris quite rightly put, and you know, <laughs> I agree with him uh, in the house was that yeah. the British public needs to use their common sense with this. There's no other way. You know, mm -hmm. If you're not going to use your common sense and kind of wear something on your face when you've got, you know, uh, if you're going out in public, wear something, you know, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah, common decency and safety. yeah, it's a it's yeah. a duty to protect other people, your family and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, and people you you want you quite fond of and you like to meet for longer than fifteen minutes, definitely wear yeah, that mask. Definitely, and 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 even though they've like said you can go out now and meet friends and you can meet family and stuff, still wear a face covering when you go and meet them. It's just safer that way. You know, mm. keep your distance and wear a mask. No one's going to listen to it, but, you know, the no. people that do will, will definitely help. Especially with the weather on the turn, people are definitely going to be uh, <laughs> encouraged to go indoors. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, not encouraged, but, you know, they're going to be tempted by it. No. I, I think this the second spike, and, and just, I guess, to finalise it off, do you think there'll be a second spike, yes or no? Uh, no. <laughs> you don't? No, not as bad as, well... There might be a raise in the in the number of cases, but I don't think it'll be as bad as the first one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, could, I, I could agree. I think I definitely think there'll be another spike, but it won't be as vicious or as bad as the first one. Yeah. It's definitely going to push us up even higher, you know. Yeah, I think we uh, we have the benefit of hindsight now. We we kind of know what works now. Uh, lock yeah. everyone down, but I don't know I how think, easy is that going to be. I think just be sensible, isn't it? It's that thing that comes back down to just use your head if you're going out. You know, wear something that's going to protect you or your family or your friends. Yeah, because you know, four months ago or three months ago, whenever this started, well, you, we all had no idea about these concepts of social distancing and, and yeah, no. protecting other people and hygiene. Like, 
good hiking. Yeah. Um, so I think that'll stick with us for the rest of our life. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think people definitely will take hygiene a lot more seriously now <laughs> compared to what they, they used to and whatnot. So. Oh, definitely. And <clears throat> just a bit more of just knowledge of protecting other people. You know, mm. if these things spread like wildfire if they're not not contained. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone's got a bit of knowledge now. I know there, there will always be the it's, yeah, but yeah. Unfortunately, that that's something that can't be helped. But uh, the the more knowledgeable, or the more sensible, I should say, of us, you know, hopefully we'll stick to these rules and. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of people. A lot of people abide by them as well as flout them. But... Yeah, I think um, there's just about as many people who listen to the rules who don't. So. Yeah. Just the more people that listen, the easier this is going to be. It's as simple oh yeah. As that. Definitely. Well, yes. shall we move on to the news? Oh, let us <laughs> move on to the news. The <laughs> the, 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 the <laughs> no, no, that's <laughs> um, Okay, so obviously the main main event will be uh, protests now worldwide um, mm. due to the Black Lives Matter movement. Yeah. Which um, to preface that, of course, you know, we're all very supportive <laughs> of that yeah. movement, um, and. Yeah, it's it's a big issue. No one, I think the majority of people, ninety nine percent of people, I believe in equality <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah, and no. uh, uh, fairness, and, and yeah, well, we're all well moral. <laughs> yeah, no, doesn't matter your but, race, or gender, whatever. Um, but I, I think the fact is, there's always going to be a very small minor, minority of people who are racist. Basically, yeah. uh, there's no denying it. There, there'll always be it. Um, just like there's people that are murderers, there are people that are bullies. Mm-hmm. Uh, people that are abusers there will always be those people in society so yeah no, regardless <laughs> i think the whole scale of this uh issue has been uh raised up massively uh mm-hmm. which you know it's understandable i mean what happened with george floyd was uh, despicable of course oh yeah absolutely um, and the fact that that the fact that that case uh did get raised and he is being charged with like second degree murder now i believe it is yeah Fucking absolutely. He should be thrown in jail for 40 years. Oh, simple absolutely. Answer. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so I feel like a lot of it kind of with the writing and the living, it's kind of preaching to the good moral people. Yeah. Um, when it should really be focused on the, the abusers and the people who don't, who are racists, you know. Yeah. But there will always be those in society, so I, I don't really know what the answer is. I think... Um, I think um, I know this one's tricky. Um, I absolutely think people should have the right to protest, um, but with and and I absolutely think this is an important matter that needs to never go away um, because there's always going to be racism and, and whatnot. But how people have been rioting, breaking the law by looting and things like that, how does that help anyone? Yeah, especially in the middle help, of a pandemic. <laughs> how the hell does that help the movement? Yeah. You're making people who. Su- look like who support the black Lives movement you're making them look like ourselves oh yeah we can loot this place because we're rioters we're supporters of this movement i think uh, i don't know which celebrity it was but i saw like um a thing while i was watching philip defranco it was a, a black guy he was talking about the what's been going on and how he has suffered uh, with racism and stuff going through i think it was a british athlete but even yeah. he dismissed you know people breaking into malls and stuff he's like that doesn't help our movement how does violence help that just makes people not listen yeah um and i i believe there was a youtuber uh oh well let's face it everyone knows who he is jake paul that fuck with yeah, yeah. Uh, he that actually just... got charged with two misdemeanors because he was rioting and looting and stuff trying to film a youtube video i think people like that is what makes this movement seem like such a bad thing mm. i mean if you look in the uk i think there's been a couple of areas which have had like bad riots that had to have police intervention and things but not a lot of places and then you look at america and trump was just like i don't care just send yeah. the police everywhere and then he had the audacity to take a bible stand outside of a church and <laughs> made a propaganda video on it and he was apparently he was holding the bible upside down as well oh, which god. offended a lot of people oh god he is a moron yeah and they had to like uh enforce the national guard to like clear the area of people so that he could shoot that uh promotional thing ridiculous i mean that guy is just becoming another putin 
literally yeah. he made it it was a propaganda video that's all it was and then yeah. when it was released it had like lovely music behind it oh he's our <laughs> savior he's such a lovely guy no he isn't he's an orange faced tangerine that shouldn't be in power you yeah know? and uh, i think he's just used it as like an excuse to i'm such a great guy i know how yeah. to look after our country I mean, stuff like this would never have happened under Obama's leadership. Oh, absolutely. No. And don't get me wrong, again, Obama had his issues, but yeah. he was not an arsehole. <laughs> That's, yeah. you, and the thing is, even I would go as far as to say JFK, Nixon, not even they were this bad. This no. guy is an ass. He just shouldn't be in power. You know, I think. Well, he, how he got there would be a mystery to us all. <laughs> I think he quoted in the past no politician has been treated as badly as him. <laughs> yeah, fake news, why. Fake news. Yeah, that is fake news. There's plenty of fucking politicians that would have been treated worse. JFK. Mm. <laughs> you know? But I mean, I don't know. There's uh, some, I can't understand how the people that work under him, obviously, there's a certain atmosphere to it. I think many people who have been fired and come out and said there's a certain feel to how working for him is. He is just a despicable human, and if he yeah. he he st- do you know why he stopped voting polls to like v- people to vote in from their homes, like voting ballots and mails and stuff? It is absolutely because he knows he would lose. Yeah, absolutely, and it's still it doesn't matter how the vote goes. He is not president again for another four years, and if he is, something ain't right there. I am smelling oh. conspiracy. I just yeah, it'd be full of it. Well, like you said with the the um. On Twitter, when they removed his like <laughs> his uh, tweets, or put a warning level like, "Oh, polling stations are like biased," isn't he? Yeah. Um, so I, I think that it also applies to him. Maybe that's why he's saying. That. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Um, well, the thing is, though, the, the polling like uh, fraud in that area is the lowest I think it's been in probably more than many many years. Which is what astonishes me about how he seems to think that it's so flawed and it's such a bad system. You know, I don't get it. It's yeah. ridiculous. And I think he's he's completely adding fuel to the fire of this Black Lives Matter uh, <laughs> campaign. He's he's uh, really not helping that situation. He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I, if, like people were saying, if he just like sat down with a load of important ministers, like <laughs> you know, for this whole campaign, like mm. he would. He would gain so much support over it, and he would like kind of simmer the flames a little bit yeah. by uh, just meeting with some activists, isn't he? Yeah, no, absolutely. Holding his hands up, saying, "You know, okay, we hear you." Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it obviously started with the pre- police brutality thing, and it's kind of yeah. <laughs> evolved into this whole kind of civil rights <laughs> thing, like you yeah. Know, I must admit, when I first heard the the kind of slogan "Black Lives Matter," oh, hold on a minute, don't don't all lives matter. But then yeah, I really yeah. kind of realised the error of my ways. You know, I, th- I, I think I think the thing is, uh, I'm very I, much I, I, kind of yes, Black Lives do matter. Absolutely, there is no questioning that. But unfortunately, you know, as much as I agree that like all lives matter, it doesn't matter your race, your gender, your ethnic, whatever. You know, that that stuff doesn't matter. No matter what, you're a human being, you matter. Mm. Um, I think the Black Lives Matter movement is such an important movement because coloured people and black people are so badly treated. Like it doesn't matter where you look. It like mm. racism is still such a prominent thing in the twenty first century, and it's ridiculous. Why? Why is it the why is it people look at someone and go just because of your colour I don't like you? It just I doesn't know. make sense. Those people are the people who live in Southern America and their sisters that is just they <laughs> are those people they're just, these are the kind of type of people who won't give a shit about this whole campaign they'll still yeah. be amongst us you know absolutely yeah no they're, they're um, not going to give a shit today <laughs> yeah but yeah so obviously my concern is it will this go down in history as kind of a good milestone in the whole kind of movement mm. um obviously there have been so many kind of positive ones uh for example martin luther king and his his whole um peaceful protests and his speeches and mm. Uh, Jesse Owens winning the Berlin uh, 1936 Olympics in front of Hitler himself. <laughs> uh, not winning, but gold medals. Um, yeah. uh, obviously, Obama, Obama uh, being a president. I mean, that must show yeah. <laughs> at some level of you know equality in the world. Oh, and uh, he won it twice. He he won yeah. f- for eight years. 
yeah. I, I almost felt like a turning point, like, oh, thank God, this is behind us now. Oh, I know. I, I think it's such a shame that it will always be a natural part of, of just stupid people um, and ignorant people as well. But I, don't know, I think, unfortunately, there's a, a man in power who just has a certain agenda and feels his ego. Him, you know <laughs> and i think unfortunately he just makes it look he makes people look bad you know he he's very selfish he doesn't care no and uh unfortunately i think he has kind of made the situation with especially racism worse you know yes. just from how he's acted how he's said things how he's portrayed things you know it's it is what it is, and I, uh, you know, I, I don't think it'll ever change. I hope the next person who takes over after him it can sort of fi- not fix some of it. I mean, it's impossible to fix, but sort of have more control over it. You know, understanding like, of it. Joe Biden or something is he running against it? Yeah, more? I mean, Joe, don't, I, I don't like. Him. <laughs> I don't like him. I like him, but he is a surefire better than Trump. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tr- Trump is just a. F- fucking tangerine is it like a requirement to be in your 70s or 80s to be president <laughs> <laughs> obama went <laughs> by the end of his run he looked like a fucking retired elderly man he was like done his hair was yeah. gray he was stressed he was visibly <laughs> upset every time he did a speech that man was a broken human by the end of it yeah the same with all our prime ministers they all kind of look like they're aged 10 years except for boris boris looks like he's getting fucking younger <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, get it. Apart from when he put a video on when he had coronavirus himself. Yeah, exactly. Still it's the only time he looked older, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, just um, quickly, I suppose, the, the whole other aspect of this is the whole uh, social media campaign that's kind of run alongside this and the, the virtue signalling amongst different companies to kind of do something so that they are seen <laughs> to be supporting. Seen, not heard. Uh, seen to be supporting, whereas, like, are there intentions to be supportive like if you want to do that make a difference you know increase pay donate to charity mm. is having a blackout and turning your <laughs> servers up for two hours a good yeah. response something like this i or, uh... i get it i get it because it's it's one of those big moves isn't it for a company to go do you know what we're not going to earn any money for a set amount of time simply because we're going to turn the servers off because we support this movement that is a noble thing However, (laughs) why not, instead of doing that, take a large sum of money and donate Mm -hmm. it to a charity that works to protect these people, to help people who are suffering with racism and things like that, and and support a community that is trying to make black lives better and matter more. You know, that would be a bigger impact to me rather than, oh, you, you turned your servers off. Yeah. Do you know you oh, earn you, billions you, from that every week? <laughs> you know, like, it's, and it's, it's not really the whole, like, impressive. People all over social media changing their profile pictures to, to being black for yeah. one day, you know. One day, that's all that matters. Yeah. I think for um, a, a everyday person to change their stuff to black, I get it. Because obviously there's the, we're limited as to what we can do, you know. We can't exactly yeah. make an impact on the world massively if we don't have much money or things like that. Um, I absolutely think that, fair enough, if you want to support it for a day... That, go ahead you're not hurting anyone whatever you know Uh, i hate social media personally so hey more people that don't use it better but uh, for a big company to do it it just comes across as a bit fake i guess so Um, tokenistic yeah it comes across like like, oh look we're so good we've done this you know it's like well couldn't you do a little bit more you know uh, i don't know maybe that's just kind of scraping the barrel of things to do yeah maybe uh, maybe that's a very uh ignorant viewpoint i'm i'm not sure i'd like yeah, maybe to that's that. maybe that's our white privilege you know, but I, I i would love to be educated on it a bit more maybe understand why they couldn't put a bit of money towards a, a charity or a campaign or something to help instead of turning off their servers maybe there's some logistical re- like stuff behind it why they can't do it you know i don't know yeah maybe it is an ignorant answer on my part but from where i'm standing or sitting doesn't exactly look like that turning your servers off for a night ea ea Rockstar uh, is uh, is yeah, going to do a lot, you know. Rockstar could definitely have done more. It's um, the same for any big company, really, you know. Um, I think yeah, it's just big YouTubers were like, "Oh, I've stopped my." I think Jeffrey Star was one. Oh, I've stopped um, my delivery service for today, so no one's going to get their shit that they've paid for because oh, no. <laughs> you know, it, it's just I don't know. It just comes across very ignorant to me. Um, it just seems like they have to be seen to do something. Yeah. Um, 
in order to not be branded as like non politically correct or something. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you're going to do something like that, mean it, you know. Yeah, no, and, and, and absolutely. If you are stopping stuff, if you are social media influencing, like or oh, YouTuber, and they go, "I'm not uploading today because Black Lives Matter movement and stuff," fine, that is perfectly acceptable. Don't just say it though. Show evidence, you know. Do something yeah. more than just not upload. You know, it's not exactly yeah. hard to just not upload. <laughs> yeah, you know, do, do a bit more. I, I, again, I don't know if that's an ignorant viewpoint or maybe a, a politically wrong thing to say, so. but that's my view so. on it. That that is my take. You know, I think people could do more. Yeah, I guess it's just the end of the day. If we're <clears throat> we're we're not black, so we don't know what it's like basically um, mm. to have racism against us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No. Um, I, I as as a white man that has grown up in the uk you know uh no i've never experienced racism towards myself no. i've been friends with everyone you know regardless of, of race gender whatever you know i, I, don't, I don't care but I mean, you know i have obviously witnessed black racism. aren't the only people who have oh, yeah, uh, no, racism absolutely. against them but yeah but that's this is the big movement going on right now yeah you know? someone described it as low oh, there's many houses in peril but this one needs our help right now so. yeah um yeah, so, I mean, there will never be a, a point where it's like, oh, it's all behind us now, you know, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it'll always be there, absolutely. It will always be there, so if this rioting and looting and violence carries on, then it's, like, not good. Like, all, all police officers who are brutal and violent need to go straight away. Um, yeah, no. I definitely. It, it was, like, 18 count, like complaints on that one guy who actually caused the death, and then, yeah. you know, uh, 11 counts on the his partner, like... Why so many? Just and, fucking get rid of them. <laughs> did you see that video of the uh, old guy getting pushed over? Uh, I didn't know. No. Absolutely. Um, oh god, you could hear the crack of his head on the floor on the pavement. He was like seventy years old, and like a, a big group of police officers just went past and didn't even care about him. Um, the assumption, they, like their, their story, was that he tripped. But I mean, you can see the video evidence that he, he was pushed. Yeah. Basically, yeah. and um, well, the guy responsible that. was um, fired, and then. All the rest of his squad resigned as protest against him being fired. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to be missed. I think I that's the biggest problem. I think it's people... the attitude of the police. Well, police should have. Uh, and I've said this ever since I've been a carer, or when I was a carer. I've said this since then. If you're whether you're a firefighter, a police officer, um, an amb- a, you know, a paramedic. Uh, a doctor, a carer, whatever, you have to have the same mindset. And that mindset is, I care about people, I'm doing this because I want to help people. Not because yeah. you want power, not because you want control, to help people. And unfortunately, a lot of people become police officers, notice how much control and power they have, and get lost in it. And they start mm-hmm. acting like they own the world or whatever. And it's there's no consequence for them. And this is what happens, you know? Yeah, people it's, get outraged. Yeah, it's, it's utter crap. Hello, kitty. Um, yeah, so hopefully things will be put in place to sort that out. You know, yeah. we can make make a difference one small step at a time. Do a psychology test on all of them. <laughs> I know. Make sure they have some kind of moral compass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, but yeah, I suppose you know that's all we can really say on that. We yeah, it's difficult to, to like right now. It's still going on. I I highly recommend anyone that is you know watching or listening go and do the research on this stuff there is so much to it so many different incidents that are going on right now um go off and make your own opinion of it as well because there's way too much information like we do with it, as silly as it is to compare this serious thing to our conspiracy theories we talk about it's the same thing go and do your research learn about it yourself as well it's important to be mm. educated you don't have to know everything but be educated on it at least to some extent yeah because that's where like a lot of racism or prejudgments come from. It's like people not doing the research. Exactly. Um, exactly. People taking that first judgment and just rolling with it rather than, I mean, like I did when I saw Black Lives Matter. I thought, hang on a minute, you know. <laughs> but then, like, it, it took it not to mean only Black Lives Matter, you know. Yeah. Um, but do your research definitely. Uh, it helps. Absolutely. So yeah, we'll draw a line under that for now. Yes. Probably return to it next week. We'll probably end up coming back to it because you know it's an ongoing thing. But good to have um, a chat about it. Okay, so the next news article that came out this week. Okay, go on. Uh, Madeline McCann. Right, there has okay. been a new suspect. Uh, he's called Christian Bruckner, a uh, German guy, forty-three years old now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he apparently has a history of rape, child abuse, robberies. He, he was a suspect in the beginning. He was ruled out by uh, Portuguese police, though. Okay. 
and he's apparently been on the radar radar ever since. But now I believe there was like um, he confessed to one of his friends that he had something to do with it, and he was also involved in another case, like involved raping a seventy-year-old woman or something. Oh, uh, that's a jumping age. <laughs> I know. I, <laughs> I shouldn't uh, make jokes about it, but Jesus, uh, like in the same area. Um, oh, but Despicable. so yeah, that's apparently the development in that. So everyone is kind of pointing towards this guy. Uh, that's actually taken her and then the German authorities believe she's actually uh, dead so yeah. well, well, who gave them that fucking idea I <laughs> so, so it, Dean, it, how many years <laughs> so the German case is a, um, a murder investigation whereas the English case is a missing person investigation so. yeah interesting uh, one well, this is the first I've heard of this. Uh, I personally have said since the beginning, stay there, Peachy. Uh, I've s- said this since the beginning. I think it's the parents. That's just my personal opinion from everything that happened. I don't think they did it on purpose. I don't think it was an intentional murder. I think she was ill. I think something must have happened and she just passed away when they went out. But instead of just, you know, owning up to it, they didn't. They tried to hide it and stuff. Mm-hmm. If there is enough evidence against this guy, absolutely something needs to be done if he is the person who has done this but i'm you know just to ask is the only evidence that he supposedly did it uh was him admitting it to a friend uh, a trusted person. Well, apparently he was in the area at the time he received a phone call mm-hmm. half for like half an hour before the abduction happened um and he, he owned like a house in the area and he had a camper van in the area apparently so a lot of stuff uh, put him in the area yeah, and he did this confession rather recently. Oh, um, he confessed to two crimes. One of them has been confirmed that he did do it. So okay. Which the other the, one um, is this the elderly one. lady one, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, okay. which he's going to be serving time for um, Good. in prison. Absolutely. Um, but see, he, he looks like an absolute creep as well. <laughs> but see, the problem is, is it, uh, criminals have this weird fucking mindset of like they will just admit to something because they want it on yeah. their rap sheet, kind of like, a, oh, a badge of honour that they did this. I would rather them do more investigating and find out more evidence to prove that he had actually done this than just going, oh, he admitted to it and he owns these things in the area. He was in the Uh area at the time. Fuck it. We'll just put it on him. Like, no. Yeah. It's like they haven't openly said it was him who did it, but like, a lot of evidence points his way. He's on the front page of every single newspaper right now. Like, they're pretty much trial by media. (laughs) This is exactly why he probably admitted to it if he hasn't done it. If he has done it, absolutely, he should be suffering the consequences for it but if he hasn't done it he's now got what he wants he's getting all this press and his face is everywhere his name is everywhere because he wants to be recognized as this famous madeline mccann abductor and killer like yeah it's disgusting but it is what criminals do and this is why it's so important that they really really look into this and if he is the one who did it absolutely slap him with it and and yeah. put him in jail but if he hasn't he cannot be charged with it just because they want to find an answer to it. That's yeah. not how it works. And like, it's interesting how it kind of comes out now when there's all this, mm. all these interesting movements in the news and the uh, politics. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Another yeah. conspiracy theory, a maybe a bit, bit of con- distraction. Seems a little bit convenient to me. Yeah, personally. like why now? <laughs> because if, if that was the case, why is it taking them so long? Um, like this, if um, this guy was in the area, he'd also committed a crime in the area. He owned a number of houses, and he was a suspect in the beginning. But he's been on their radar. Something yeah. don't add up. And there, the thing is, like he's been um, accused of all these kind of things, but murder isn't one of them. Then, yeah. so this is another thing as well. But Madeline McCann's not alive. I'm sorry to burst anyone's bubble. She's not. Um, yes, for a little while, maybe. But I, uh, I, I mean, it's such an a confusing case which is why it's unsolved you know there's no evidence left in the actual thing there was barely any evidence to suggest she was abducted because no one had broke in there was no forced entry nothing so if someone did abduct her they let themselves in cleanly Mm. which is why it doesn't make sense that she was abducted there's a lot of things against the mccann's that just don't add up which is yeah you know i have my opinions fair enough but i hope that if this guy did it he is reprimanded but if he didn't do it i hope they finalize that and move on from it you know yeah i mean i don't think the mccann's did it in my opinion but mm. 
So I probably That's fair. M- more believe this abduction theory. <laughs> yeah. uh, theory. Yeah. <laughs> That's what the, the narrative is, isn't it? Yeah. I think uh, everything's a theory until there's solid evidence. Isn't I know, it? that's just the thing. In all these cases, there's just no evidence. <laughs> the, the people, like, my, my view of the McCanns doing it isn't like an intentional thing. It isn't like a malicious thing. It was a complete accident. They didn't do it on purpose. I know there's people out there that think they did it on purpose, that they're evil bastards or whatever. Mm. No. I do think they're evil in the fact that they've made money off it. Sick bastards wrote books, fucking had merchandise. Like, that is disgusting. <laughs> that is despicable. Uh, Your kid is missing, presumed dead, and you're like, let's write a book! Like, you know, those two... <laughs> well are, those two are disgusting, despicable parents that should not be... They should be castrated. But I, I genuinely don't know what's happened to Madeline. Like, I don't uh, think anyone does. And I think that's what why hearing there's a new suspect is kind of annoying to me, because they're just like, oh, he could have done it, and then the media have gone, oh, new suspect. It's like, oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Let's you know? focus on something else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like trying to find a different news because of the same thing every week. But yeah, I don't know. It's like, I ask, I, spe- I suppose the parents have been through a lot of pain. Mm. Um, they've been trolled and hounded by the media. This has gone on for so many years now. Yeah. Uh, so I do kind of uh, sympathise with them a little bit, but. Yeah. Yeah, they should be writing books about stuff and going on world tours and that. I personally it's... don't feel sorry for them because of what they did after it, the books mm. and stuff. If they hadn't done any of that, I definitely I would still have some sympathy, even if I had my suspicions they did it. But the fact that how many books is it? Three, mm. two or three books? Yeah, I think so. And that's just the books. That's not including tours, meet and greets, which is weird. <laughs> press conferences, the number of press conf, like even years after. They had the case reopened. <laughs> and uh, the they, amount of money that's gone into this like one yeah, case, like, it's, it's like, it's nuts. they say it's eleven million, but apparently it's like hell of a lot more. Than oh, that. it'd be a lot more. A lot. This case is now how old? Or when did when did uh, this start? Like thirteen years, is it? Yeah, Three, over a decade. That's not eleven million. That's hundreds of millions. Like yeah. that's a lot of money. To, and when I get it. Been, Hundreds more kids go missing. Yeah, absolutely. I think every child or any person that goes missing should have the full attention, as much money that it needs thrown in it, throw it at it. But, um, yeah, no. I think but this yeah. one's a pretty clear cut to me. But hopefully, yeah. whatever the truth is, it comes out soon and they can have some closure or, you know, they we find out who did it. Yeah, it's like, it's also because, like, a middle class white family having the child abducted was like. A, just like such a sweeping story at the time. Like, would it have the same attention if it was like a little black girl? Or exactly. Think. Yeah. It's there's a lot of questions as well that come with it again, but I think that would be its own fucking podcast <laughs> yeah. alone. You know, with the amount of information. Uh, <laughs> so I won't. I won't. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah. <laughs> well, short. Long story short, I don't think it would have the same amount of attention. Mm. Um. But yeah. Uh, any more news? I haven't got any more news. Well, there probably has been more news, but I haven't read anything more else down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think, I think they're, they're two very big topics. Uh, so. Big topics? Uh, yeah, <laughs> the two we've just covered. Yeah. yeah, they were huge ones. We'll save a little bit for next week. Important. <laughs> I definitely think they're important to acknowledge and talk about. Absolutely. But um, definitely big topics, yeah. It's the kind of thing that if you say the wrong thing, you'll be hounded on. <laughs> shit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what people think, man. I think everyone is, has the right to their own opinion. I think it's just be respectful with that opinion. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, like, you know. And and just I'm more than open to debate with people like me and you. We don't see eye to eye on everything, and we have wonderful conversations that last yeah, a long time. And I think that's why it's more interesting. Be. And it's nice because then you get a different point. I love hearing your points of view because sometimes it does make me rethink what I think about something. Mm. So it's important, but just I guarantee if this podcast was bigger, there'd be some dickhead in the comments just you're an asshole for thinking that, and you're a dick for not accepting it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's uh, why part of me is glad that we're not here yeah, <laughs> yeah. never want to be there never uh, yeah. i don't think we will be with these comments <laughs> youtube's not going to promote this shit we've talked about really 
<laughs> that's that's the thing you've said that word so it's just like it's gone it's in the news for god's sake yeah. um but yeah we'll move on to games then. gaming okay so do you want to have you got anything gaming related you want to talk about um well the ones i've been playing i haven't really i suppose we've covered a lot of games in the previous ones that are coming out like in the next few weeks yeah um so now I've just Ooh. been kind of working on my backlog of uh, things I've been playing. I've played a bit of Fallout 76. I actually finished the Wastelanders campaign. Ooh, without spoiling anything, what's it like? Uh, it's, it's, it is pretty good, to be honest. Um, mm. I hadn't actually finished the, the normal campaign before I yeah. uh, died the uh, Wastelanders, so I've kind of been doing a bit of both of those. Mm. Um, but I, I've really enjoyed it. The the acting is good. It's made me laugh. Um, just the dialogue is just good. Um some of the story is like quite interesting it's like goes into the lore of it and stuff it's like this is a proper fallout game now um but yeah i was impressed hmm. well, that's good well i'm, I'm uh, looking, looking forward to playing a bit more of that eventually yeah well i can, I can play with you and pretend i don't know what's going on <laughs> <laughs> i don't know well i suppose there is that kind of multiple choice aspect of it so it can yeah. go Either way. different ways like i chose one way you might not choose the same one yeah we have different ways of playing <laughs> <laughs> um it keeps it spicy, it keeps it spicy yes. uh so, yeah you can feel free to chip in if uh, something you've got <laughs> oh i've got quite i've got quite a lot of game suggestions um i saw some of your notes <laughs> Ser- serious sam games i highly recommend one of the first fps's to come out just after doom and duke nukem Highly recommend people go and check those old games out. They're brilliant. Um, Judge Dread, Dread vs. Death, an old FPS shooter. I played through that again for like the hundredth time. It's really short, really quick. You can finish it in like three hours, but it's a good laugh. Not doesn't take itself too seriously. It's always a fun one. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about The Last of Us 2. Because obviously okay. this comes out in two weeks. Uh, I was just kind of... I know we briefly touched on this before, but... Um, are you still excited for it? Because I know a lot of obviously controversial stuff happened with it. Um, so yeah. uh, with leaks and things like that, I've still, thank God, managed to avoid everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you, I've avoided all the leaks and I've tried to avoid a lot of the recent trailers that have come out. Mm. I haven't watched anything basically other than like a very brief one a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely excited. I know the. Uh, I just know it's going to be so good. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Um, same, little same screenshots uh, I've seen. It's just like, just looks awesome. If they can raise the bar from Uncharted Four and like and Lost Legacy and stuff, and the first one, Jesus, yeah. uh, Naughty Dog can really pull out of the bag. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. The next thing was Dying Light Two. Okay. So there's a little bit of news and some updates. Obviously, this year the game got cancelled again. Uh, it was meant to be coming out in spring of this year, but that got changed uh, to now the game has been delayed indefinitely, but not cancelled. Uh, uh, they they damn. have said uh, the CEO Paul Mark, Mark Chuak Chuaka has said, uh, quote, we were initially aiming for a spring 2020 release with Dying Light 2, but unfortunately we need more development time to fulfill our vision. We will have more details to share in the coming months and we'll get back to you as soon as we have more information. We apologise for this unwelcome news. Our priority is to deliver an experience that lives up to our own high standards and expectations of our fans. End quote. A lot of stuff that came out about this game, obviously, Dying Light 2, the map is a lot smaller. But mm. there's a hell of a lot more stuff to do. The actual choices you have will have a huge impact in the world, apparently, and how the story goes. The, it's 15 years after the first game. Graphically, it is not a, just a step up, but it is about 20 step ups, I think, has been described as. Mm. Essentially, the entire game has been praised as a godlike game. <laughs> yeah, um, I, was, I, I saw the E3 uh, gameplay trailer. Oh, it's yeah, no, incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks like nothing that we've ever seen you know this this looks I mean, like something absolutely incredible um and i hope they can keep to the the standards that they have especially for this game i mean uh i think it's new Techland that do these games and christ the first one was bloody brilliant i think the yeah. only thing i didn't like was the um trial thing or the the survival thing or something i can't remember what it was probably mm. because it's been so long but definitely a game to go and play if you haven't during this time oh yeah strongly recommended the, the first one was so good it still holds up today oh absolutely um, that game graphically and gameplay wise a masterpiece i mean i've been playing it on pc since i've obviously been 
away from my consoles, but I it absolutely is outstanding game regardless of platform. It's yeah. It blows you out of the water every fucking time. One of my favourite things about it was the parkour system, I suppose. Yeah, no. It's it, like, it felt so different. <laughs> it was simple, but so Smooth. effective. Yeah. Yeah. Seamless. Much better than, like, Mirror's Edge and things like that, you know, that had tried it before. And it but, seemed like the second one kind of had loads of improvements tenfold on that. Mm, like, definitely. You could just interact with everything, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um, the thing I was going to actually ask was uh, theories on the gameplay and the story. What are you uh, kind of, what, a... what are your guesses on what you think the game is going to be? I know we've had like a little drops here and there. We know who the main character is. We kind of know his motivations and stuff. But I've kind of avoided everything if uh, massively possible. But yeah. What, so what do you? So the, basically, how the um, first one ended was Joel basically lying to Ellie about him, kind of putting her above the <laughs> health of everyone. Yeah. Um, so he saved her when she could have like, helped develop a vaccine for this kind of thing. Um, mm. So that's going to cause some... She's obviously going to find out in this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's going to cause a bit of a, a dynamic between Joel and Ellie, but I'd imagine she'd forgive him. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, love conquers all. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's going to cause some tension between the two. Uh I believe uh, I don't really want to go into too much because um, yeah, yeah, without spoiling oh, anything, it oh, seems like she gets a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, well, we already knew that she was into women anyway, didn't we? From the DLC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, big question. We'll leave Last of Us to them. Are they going to kill Joel? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you think they'll kill him, or do you reckon uh, they'll let him live? I think it might be a bit too obvious to kill him. I reckon. Maybe they'll kill Ellie. <laughs> I reckon they'll kill him, but they'll do it in a way... He's that already looking really pretty expect. old quite right now. Yeah. Someone tells me he's going to die, but it's not going to be kind of just like, oh, he was shot and killed, or oh, he got bitten and he died. Like It's going to be either extremely graphic and gruesome, or really Maybe unexpected just... and out of nowhere. I reckon they'll do kind of a time leap at the end, where he just kind of dies naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Ellie kind of lives on to lead this world yeah or it'll be a similar situation as to how maybe it'll be like uh when joel die, does die it'll be a similar situation to how uh his daughter died maybe and then ellie will be the one trying to save him yeah that could be a good one that would be boom straight in the heart <laughs> <laughs> or a kind of uh parallel with how the first one ended with uh yeah with him saving her but for like the wrong reason mm. um Hmm. I mean, I'm excited about how they're going to do it, but... Yeah. God knows. <laughs> I'm sure they've got plenty of tricks up the sleeves. I mean, if we could guess what happens, it w- probably wouldn't be a good game, because they're going to surprise us. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Very excited, though. Definitely. Um, okay. Put the blur on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I forgot to put it on earlier. It was just in case people walk behind, so that way then it's fair. They're not... Their faces aren't being shown or anything, but... Um, yeah, no. All right, that's um, all the game and stuff. I did, I think, briefly mention dying light, dying light too. Um, yeah, yeah. But um, I don't think there's much really to talk about now. I would like to know the stories and kind of stuff like that, but I don't. I don't. At the same time, I don't want to spoil it for myself. So, but the it's delayed that... definitely. We'll uh, talk yeah. about that when it's not delayed indefinitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no point getting our hypes up for uh, <laughs> nothing. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say. Uh, there hasn't been much talk about PS Plus when it comes to PS5. Like, do you think that will continue on? Yeah, uh, pay to play online. Yeah, undoubtedly. Um, unfortunately, yeah. it's one of their biggest money makers. They're not going to get rid of it. I wish yeah. they would, because it used to be free. <laughs> I know. I think a month after it wasn't free, I got a PS4. So yeah, it um, used to be an optional service. So yeah, exactly. Where you just got some extras, but now it's uh, kind of you have to do it if you want to. Play if you want to play games. with friends and things like that, yeah, you have to, and it's a bullshit. <laughs> yeah. But I can imagine that how, how much good PR if they said, oh, you know, everyone can play online for free. Oh, can you imagine? Always. That would be it. Xbox wouldn't even get a look in. I know. <laughs> so but... I'm actually excited for both, though. I can't, I can't deny that I am excited for both consoles. And now that I have paid my Argus card off, I have nothing to pay off. I am now saving loads of money. Hopefully, <laughs> I'll be able to get get one or both. And try and let you know how they are. But that we'll is uh, that is quite a leap. 
We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think they will be continuing with this pay plan because they'd be shooting themselves in the foot. Otherwise, uh, that's a lot of an money. income. Uh, that's how they support their service these days. Apparently, even though it used to be free, um, used to go up to just console sales alone. Yeah, games used to not have microtransactions. <laughs> Where did those uh, days go? Yeah. I know. Now it's all for you know. We've got to pay for our lives, have it? Oh, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> but it is what it is. Which you then have to keep on paying for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, that's that's going to continue, no doubt. And especially because they're selling PlayStation Plus in like a sale right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can keep on stacking it on top of each other. Imagine how annoyed you'd be if you just paid for five years. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And then people would be pissed off if it was like, no, it's free. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Onto movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I haven't really got that many, but I watched the original Adams Family and the new animated film recently. They were really oh, good. I finally sat down and watched them. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire, another one I finally sat down and watched. Love that one. <laughs> Robin Williams, so good. Love Robin Williams. Just anything he's in, he just lights it up. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, what else? Anything else? I, and Ink Master, basically, just loads of Ink Master. Loads of tattoo stuff. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. You're not into tattoos, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 You know what I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's all. I I really haven't watched a lot, um, to be honest. Surprisingly, I've just been sticking with uh, Amazon this uh, Amazon Prime things. I, I watched uh, My Spy. Oh yeah, because I was uh, interested. That's got Dave Bautista, right? Dave Bautista, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting watching him not in like the Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. and uh, I'm not sure what other films he's been in, but he's uh, he, he's good. <laughs> He's pretty good in it, and the relationship between him and the little girl is like, it's funny, it works, it works. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't give it a massive raving review, but it's, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's an enjoyable one. And <laughs> uh, uh, that's pretty much the only film I watched this week. Um, as far as TV goes, I watched, uh, I finished off Dead to Me, second season. It is very good. It's very good. Uh, I recommend anyone watching that. Mm-hmm. If you want a bit of mystery and drama and, and, hilarity as well mm-hmm. i started watching um <laughs> alex Ryder on amazon yeah oh okay that is it's, it's interesting i remember watching the films and reading the books as a kid yeah um and i was i was interested in that kind of spy kind of thing mm. but uh it, it's all right it's all right i'm waiting to put some more you know interesting stuff to happen in it I've got about four episodes in but pretty good so far my my trial runs out in two days, so I've got like a day to watch five episodes. <laughs> oh damn! So this is why I just pay for it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I shouldn't because yeah. I pay for too much shit. <laughs> I'd save a, I'd save a fortune. But yeah. you're doing it the right way. <laughs> doing it the wrong way when it comes to money, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I think we go. That. Uh, that's it for films and TV series. Okay, so for those people who don't like talking about conspiracy theories, bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> welcome to the, the tinfoil hat moment. Um, so, yeah, today the conspiracy theory we are going to be talking about is a chemtrail conspiracy theory. Now, is there anything you actually know or knew about this uh, sort of theory uh, uh, before? Honest answer is no. <laughs> the oh. First I've heard of it was uh, when yeah. you sent me a message this morning. Okay, cool. Um, I, I personally heard little bits and bobs here and there. Um, my what's... initial thoughts on it is like... Yeah, I was going to say, what's kind of your initial thoughts? Uh, really not buying this one, to be honest. <laughs> well, um, there's multiple choice at the end. Um, okay. Multiple kind of answers <laughs> that have been discussed. And actually... I think for the first time in all the conspiracy theories we've talked about, there's actually one that has been proven to be right. There's actual right. evidence. But whether this is actually what they're doing with these trails or whatever, lo and behold, we don't know. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, okay. So just a quick brief rundown of anyone that doesn't know what it is. Uh, the chemtrail conspiracy theory post, uh, poise the erroneous belief that the long-lasting consideration trails or concentration trails. Uh, condensation, um, that is. That is condensation <laughs> trails. <laughs> I can't read English. 
are chemtrails consisting of chemical or biological agents left in the sky by high-flying aircraft sprayed from nefarious purposes and disclosed to the general public. Uh, believers in this theory say that while normal con contrails uh, dis dissipate relatively dissipate. quickly, Thank you. <laughs> con <laughs> contrails that linger must contain additional substances. Uh, those who subscribe to the theory speculate that the purpose of the chemical release may be solar radiation management, weather modification, psychological manipulation, human population control, or bio or chemical warfare. So essentially, they're the trails that are left behind planes. <laughs> That's um, just kind of like pollution, though, isn't it? Well, the one of the things from it was that the essentially it's where the air going over like the wings and stuff of planes and things like that because of the sudden change in pressure that's why these trails appear from the back of the engines because the heat goes yeah. into the cold air and it just causes this trail of just sort of plume. condensation yeah, trail essentially yeah so um, a little bit of history about it. Um, the chemtrail conspiracy theories began to circulate after the United States Air Force published a 1996 report about weather modification. Following the report in the late 1990s, uh, the USAF was accused of spraying the US population with mysterious substances from aircraft, generalizing uh, unusual contrail patterns. So because patterns in the sky looked a bit off, they didn't look kind of like the normal kind of plane things, um, they suspected that the government was kind of just dropping these weird chemicals on people back in the 1990s to kind of change their mindsets or especially around that time um i'm not 100 percent sure but i do believe that the government were kind of you know not exactly looked upon fondly uh mm -hmm. should we say because of a lot of incidents that had happened so that's kind of that uh, i'm not going to read through all of these things by the way guys the link as always will be down below if you want to go and read the uh, actual page on wikipedia of this stuff because there is a lot um, but this one is one of the smallest ones I could find, uh, as we only got this one today. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of news to talk about today. So. Yeah, not, uh, not just that, but I was massively behind, so I guess that's my fault. Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, Ed, there's plenty more history you can go back over. Again, feel free to, uh, but I don't really need any of that rest of it. Um, so there's a lot of other stuff as well in descriptions as kind of interpretation of evidence, beliefs, actions, uh, the contrails and stuff, the history behind it. Essentially, there's a lot of things that go into this. Um, there's a lot of history behind this stuff. There's some truth. Uh, like, for instance, there was evidence and the government admitted to this that in the United States, they did actually use these contrails to uh, try and manipulate the weather um, to kind of try and gauge a fact of how much rainfall could they create? Could they make it hotter or colder or whatever? They did try to do this for a little bit of time. There was a bit of, uh, you know, weather modification going on. Um, uh, it's the act of, they, they basically tried to manipulate it so they could do whatever they wanted with it. Um, it was called cloud seeding at the time. By the way, there's multiple references I'll put underneath this because there is a factor. Uh, but yeah. So that's essentially the long story short of it. Uh, people <laughs> think the government possibly were shooting chemicals into the sky to sort of manipulate human beings and people and things like that. Um, essentially, that is what this theory is. Uh, they think the government have been putting things in the sky to control people and manipulate them and mind control them and stuff. Uh, so let's get into some of the theories, shall we? Shall we? We've got, we've got two, three, four, four, actually five, technically. So the first one we're going to talk about is solar radiation management. So SR, uh, SRM proposals are a type of climate engineering which would seek to reflect sunlight and the reduced global warming. So essentially they think people have been shooting these things into the sky or the government have been doing this to try and combat global warming. What's kind of your thought on that? Again, highly recommend people go and check these theories out themselves as well because there is a lot to these theories. That isn't all of it. There is a lot more to it. If they're using like these uh, airplanes to try and combat global warming, it's like kind of a massive contradiction because it's kind of the, the the greenhouse gases and emissions that they're pumping out with these airplanes mm. uh, are kind of contributing, it, con contributing to it anyway, the emissions. Mm. So... I'm not really buying that one because it seems like they're contradicting themselves. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it's just a little bit more information on it and then I'll shoot to the next one. Uh, solar radiation management projects could serve as a temporary response while levels of greenhouse gases can be brought under control by mitigation and greenhouse gas removal techniques. They would not reduce greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere and thus do not address problems such as ocean acidification and caused by excess carbon monoxide. So essentially, it would literally just get rid of the sunlight. <laughs> That's it. So the yeah. second one... The second theory is weather modification. So people obviously think, as I brought up very briefly earlier, that um, the government are doing these sort of things to control the weather, whether it's to bring more sunlight, whether it's to make it rain more, windy, tornadoes, whatever, things like that. Um, just as a little bit of... Uh, an example, the most common form of weather modification is cloud seeding, which increases rain or snow, usually for the purpose of increasing the local water supply. Weather modification can also have the goal of preventing damaging weather, such as hail or hurricanes, from occurring, or of provoking damaging weather against the enemy, as a tactic of military or economic warfare, like Operation Popeye, which was uh, a military cloud seeding operation carried out by the US. This was back in Vietnam War in 1967 and 1972. So this actually has evidence behind it. This has been used in the past. It was actually used for a warfare technique, and it was mm. quite successful. Um, it didn't do a lot of damage, but it did change the weather. They did make it rain more. Uh, yeah. So it seems like a lot of that? a lot of effort that goes into it just to kind of make it rain a bit more on the enemy. Yeah. No, um, no, yeah. Absolutely. Um, like how how confident were they in their science that this would like have an effect on it? You know? mm. It feels like they could have spent more time on uh, different resources for the Vietnam War rather than changing the weather. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if they tried it and it was apparently effective, then that's interesting to know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it just reminds me of Geostorm. You know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, Geostorm, I think, did actually take some of the historical evidence from these actual things to try and show kind of uh, you know, how they could possibly manipulate the weather in the future and stuff. So mm. as weird as that may seem. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, but that is the only theory here that actually has a credence of truth and evidence because it has been used. Uh, again, Wikipedia page down below. Also, I'm going to try and find there's a um, an article that was written about the weather modification stuff. It's fascinating. I'll see if I can find it later. Mm. The third one is psychological manipulation. <laughs> so uh, it's a type of social influence, of those of you who didn't know, that aims to change the behavior of perception of others, thought indirect, deceptive or underhanded tactics. Uh, it's not necessarily a negative. For example, people such as friends, family and doctors can try to persuade uh, to change clearly unhelpful habits and behaviours. So essentially the motivations behind this being used would be to encourage people to be kinder, more friendly, um, <laughs> not think so badly of the government, vote a certain person in constantly, um, someone who has no political edge or party or power gets into power. Come to think <laughs> of it, weren't there a lot more clouds in the sky before Trump was elected? <laughs> oh, oh <my> God. <laughs> so yeah that's I, essentially what that one is uh, i don't know kind of what your I, thought is behind that i think they released a lot of this um during the 80s because uh it probably released a load of pheromones to make everyone's hair massive and uh, <laughs> all like have sex more <laughs> um yeah. and listen to that music uh, yeah <laughs> Fair enough. uh yeah, you know, maybe that was a massive experiment in the eighties. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's interesting. Like uh, dropping a load of <laughs> a load of like chemicals to change people's behaviour. That would be something uh, to to like nominate Trump in, as you'd say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was just a joke. Just, just to point that out. Don't no, shoot no, me. I'm, I'm uh, taking this seriously. But yeah, no. <laughs> as as an actual thing, that that. Do you reckon that could be a possibility that has been used by government in the past, maybe to calm riots or uh, maybe political things that happened and the, the, the population didn't agree? Maybe they tried to do it to manipulate people, do you think? Um, I bet it was probably discussed, but I don't know in you know, practicality whether it would work mm. with like, how would they drop it on everyone? You know, or just yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Or with certain states that aren't uh, supportive, supportive of them. Oh, let's just do a flyby. Mm. Um, but yeah. I think it'd be hard to pull off. Yeah. 
the next one is uh, they did it for the human population planning. Um, so, for instance, population control. Uh, the idea is that they would drop toxic gas over the entire kind of area and whoever died from it died from it. Um, essentially, that is the theory. <laughs> they think yeah. These clouds are basically filled with toxic gases and things that are basically lower life expectations so they can keep the population under control. Any uh, any thoughts? Just like, just like pollution in general, giving people respiratory problems, um, areas of high pollution will generally have a, a decline in health in that area. Yeah. Um, I just, aeroplanes in general will just add to it anyway. Mm. So I'm not sure how they can just like increase that. Um, but yeah, so it's a bit of a, a failure to, to try and do something like that when mm. pop pollution in general will do that anyway. Yeah. And the fifth and final thing is their clouds, mate. Chill. <laughs> That's it. That's my theory. <laughs> <laughs> They're clouds, okay. bruh. <laughs> uh, all the is, that your, is that your theory? <laughs> no, uh, I actually, um, I don't know. If I was to believe one of the other four, uh, I would absolutely say that the likelihood is it's weather modification. Um, yeah. I mean, for psychological manipulation, personally, in my opinion, that's ridiculous. Uh, otherwise, they would have used it a lot sooner. Um, and why are there still so many wars? If a government had this power, wouldn't they just drop it over another country they don't get along with? Yeah. Uh, as for human population, it's getting larger. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> think they've done that. Uh, and as for solar radiation management, like basically uh, trying to block more sun rays and sunlight getting through to try and lower the heat of the planet. Um, I absolutely think that's a great idea. Uh, I think if a government could figure out how to do it properly and it worked, fantastic, do it. Um, because the planet is heating up, obviously, but I don't think it's something that's happened right now. So out of the four... I that sounds say, very American, that, like, blocking sunlight so the, work, the Earth doesn't get hotter. Yeah. Like, I'm sure it still gets hot anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's exactly, not just yeah. to do with the sun hitting yeah. the Exactly, yeah. Um, but, but, yeah. Um, I absolutely... And so plus, it's like something Trump would advocate. Yeah, exactly. Well, Trump's in power. He doesn't believe in global warming, doesn't he? To oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh yeah no if i had to choose one of the four personally i would say that i think it's more um kind of weather controlling things they're trying to learn how if they can sort of make it rain a bit more to help water supply um because it's been proven to have been used in the past as well so if these things are a thing i don't think it's a dangerous thing i think they're just trying to do it to try and help the world um yeah. personally my actual opinion they're clouds <laughs> yeah, that's my opinion too. I think uh, Mother Nature is kind of a, a difficult beast to handle. You know, you can't really control the weather in any kind of significant way. Maybe make it rain more or something. But, yeah. uh, I don't think they're, they're going to be causing storms anytime soon. Yeah. Um, the most interesting one is probably the psychological uh, manipulation of people. Like it's just the idea of them dropping pheromones from the sky and making everyone horny as hell. That <laughs> makes me laugh. Uh, yeah. it sounds like that. an actual. It sounds like a really shit plot to a B movie. Yeah. <laughs> That'd just be hilarious. Um, Hornado. But yeah. <laughs> <Just a sharknado>. <laughs> <laughs> everyone that gets sucked up into this uh, tornado is, is massive right. horny. <laughs> You don't get sucked into the tornado, you get uh, sucked out of it. <laughs> yeah, you get sucked out when you end up in the tornado. <laughs> uh, oh, but yeah, I don't really have any beliefs other than it's like, it's put general pollution in the clouds, mate. <laughs> yeah, they're clouds. I'm sorry. Uh, I did do a bit of research into this one as much as I could this morning. I spent a good two, three hours on it. I wish I could have spent more, but I, I'll be honest, I've been busy this week. Um, yeah. But I, I, I find it a fascinating thing. I absolutely think they could be trying to maybe possibly use the weather. Um, but other than that, I can't really see any of those other options being a viable choice as to what they're doing. Um, it's just a pressure change after the the uh, you know wings. That's all it is. It's just mm -hmm. a pressure change. And I think people kind of want to find something in nothing, I think, when it comes to this. Yeah, it's kind of different if it's used in like warfare as like a tactic mm. or and just general aircraft you see above you. Yeah. Well, I think the only time it's been recorded as proven to be used was back in the Vietnam War. Yeah. It? 
Um, they did do a, a small experiment back in that time as well over a uh, a public domain, I believe, and it ended up, it didn't turn into rain. It turned into, like, giant hailstorms. <laughs> the <laughs> cars killed people. It was very unsuccessful, so mm-hmm. don't think they'd ever do it again, personally. It, it's one of those delicate things where if they do it wrong, it can harm, do a lot more harm than good. Exactly, yeah. No, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. <laughs> that is our conspiracy theory this yeah, it's a short so, one it was a short one this time so um but we did have a nice. long a long it was a long news segment this morning uh or today uh yeah, this, mo- this morning <laughs> this morning I'm, I'm, I'm loose women. Exhausted, man. I'm so tired but uh i yeah. think we should call this loose men <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um, we're loose and we're live <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh yeah no i mean it's a good one, man. We, we talked about a lot of good stuff, a lot of good important news things that we touched on, some games think, recommended to you lovely people. Yeah, I uh, think I probably exhausted myself about thinking more about what I was going to say than what I actually said. Yeah. Which is a bit <laughs> annoying. But, oh. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, how about you find a conspiracy theory for next week? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Inside yeah, well, that sounds like a good idea. All right. Um, well, once again, thank you to everyone for watching, whoever did watch. Uh, as always, it's much appreciated from myself and to Sean. Um, as always, thank you to Sean for joining me for this podcast. And uh, for all the information on the conspiracy theory, everything will be down below. Any articles on Dying Light 2 or The Last of Us 2. Uh, Last of Us 2, I probably will avoid putting stuff down below, mainly because there's spoilers everywhere. But for Dying Light 2, I'll definitely include a few things down below if you want to go check those out. Um, <laughs> down below. <laughs> I'll try and include some live updates for the UK and everything down below on the, the coronavirus updates as well. So, yeah, if you want to go and check them out, they're all down in the description. All um, right. We'll see you down below. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you down in it. We'll see you down under, mate. Uh, it'll be a lovely time. Um, join us next time for some cracking banter. <laughs> that is an awful Aussie accent. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, no, thank you once again, Sean, for joining me. And uh, hopefully everyone enjoyed. Oh, last thing. Um, may as well talk about this quickly. Are we going to do it live next week or are we going to continue like this? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm back home next weekend. Um, <laughs> Do you, um, do you want to do it like this on the Saturday or do you want to maybe do it live and then maybe go back to this for like three weeks and then do a live one kind of like that? Uh, I suppose we'll keep people posted about it during the week. We'll have a yes. discussion about it. Keep an eye keep an eye on the uh, the Facebook yeah. page. Cause it's going to be happening done. whether it's live or not. So you'll oh, still yeah, see absolutely, on yeah. Sunday. Isn't wave, Sean, uh, quickly, wave. <laughs> wait because i've got a, i'm gonna take a photo and then i'll put that on the page but yeah there you go if you're watching this you would have seen that post yesterday <laughs> um, oh. but uh yeah again thank you sean for joining me it was very much thank a pleasure. you for having me no on um, this week's episode of blue Smith. yeah um and uh yeah we'll speak to you guys next, next week <laughs> bye-bye bye-bye I am who I am